let's talk specifically about this curve, okay? Because if this curve does not happen to the West, we're in trouble. We could potentially have a direct hit near Oahu, maybe near Kauai, maybe even near Molokai, depending on the eventual track. Uh, let's talk about that curve and your thoughts on that curve. Well, it's a challenging uh, situation because the models actually, if you look at the, the ensemble of all the models, mm -hmm. there are some tracks that take it across Maui and then weaken. All of the models uh, are, are weakening the storm uh, in time because of the effect of the wind shear. So that's good news. But some of the models are, are, are t tending to take it a little bit further north. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to put some of the models up, but uh, while I'm doing that, yeah, the models have been pretty split, uh, at least in the long term. In the short term, they have been in, in pretty good agreement, and that why, that's why the cone of uncertainty uh, is, is, is kind of narrow in the beginning for the next 24 hours, and then it kind of splits. We're going to try to see if we can get the... Uh, the forecast models here on the screen. We'll let this advance and go through, and then we'll take a closer look. Hopefully, the spaghetti model. There we go. Wow, there's there's quite a bit of spread, and it looks quite scary for for Maui County. Yeah, it's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, we run a high resolution model at mm -hmm. the university, part of the Mauna Kea Weather Center, and our model is uh, like one of these outliers. Wow. However, it is. Interesting to note that over the last several iterations of the model runs and, and the solution that, that the uh, uh, Central Hurricane uh, Center has come to with, with regard to the official track, the official track is tending to move further away from Maui mm -hmm. and, and Oahu. So the trend is in our favor. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very, very positive news. And I think the fact that the storm is seeing some effects of wind shear now mm -hmm. Uh, it speaks to that as being a likely scenario because here's what happens. You have low-level winds from the northeast the that want to take the storm to the west. Mm -hmm. You have higher-level winds, deeper winds, that ta are taking the storm uh, from the south. Mm -hmm. When the storm is strong, it's very deep and it's feeling those deeper winds. If the wind shear t makes the top of the storm less strong or less uh, uh, connected, mm -hmm. then the, the, the storm weakens and the low-level winds will take the storm in the direction to the west. So, we're, 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 you know, imagine a, a building, you know, it's vertical, a high-rise, and imagine that is a hurricane. We want to tip that building over to the yeah. side. And that explains, you know, the whole dynamics of, of wind shear. Uh, again, you know, we're, we're showing these models just so that you know the, the different types of scenarios that these supercomputers kind of spit out and, and with their mm -hmm. data. And there's, uh, you know, there's no one model that's 100% uh, correct all of the time. And, you know, in this type of situation, you have to use a little bit of, of a blend of everything, right? Well, what this shows, this spread in the models, is that there is uncertainty. And it's very important to express that uncertainty to the, to the public. Mm -hmm. Because if you have all the models moving exactly in the same direction, which happens in, in some cases, yeah. like uh, Katrina mm -hmm. coming north uh, in the Gulf, uh, all the models said uh, that it was moving in, in the same direction and hitting the same place, then you have a lot of confidence. In this case, we have less confidence, but the fact that time after time, it's, uh, the, the official forecast is, is turning it to the west, does give some confidence that it's going to do that. But when that actual turn to the west happens, that's still kind of up in the air, right? Stay on your toes and, yeah. and stay tuned. 